morning, everybody. Good morning. It's so good to be back in my home church. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's anybody new here, because I can't see that far. But if there is, we welcome you to United Methodist Church of Shrub Oak. Now, the altar flowers today are donated by Annette and Russ in honor of their daughter Stephanie's birthday. So happy birthday, Stephanie, if you're listening to us. Now, announcements, name tags. I was told, make sure everybody has their name tags on. Thank you, Hank. <laughs> and Lynn. <laughs> I had to remember to, so I always forget. Vacation Bible study registration has begun. And the school starts uh, on the 22nd and goes right through to the 26th. So please sign up if you haven't done already. And if you need registration form, it should be out on the breezeway or in the GP room, or I'm sure Debbie has them in the office. Uh, Ad Council, there's a meeting still in August, but I really don't know, has a dead no date has been set? Okay. Uh, we don't have any anniversaries this month, and I'm surprised. Usually summer people get married. July. July. Yeah, July. Oh, I, they have, they don't have you down here for July. I am so sorry they didn't tell me that. <laughs> when is the date? July 3rd. Okay. <laughs> Wait till I get past her. Uh, let's see, for birthdays, and bear with me if I say that your name wrong. Uh, tomorrow on the 8th, we have Dawson and we have, is it Aretha? I don't know how to say it. It's J A R E A T H. Jaretha. I'm sorry? Jaretha. Oh, okay. Thank you. July 10th, we have Daryl. And we have Mike Mancusi. July 11th, we have Lisa Graves. Uh, the 12th, we have is it Agetta. And the 14th, we have Peter back there. Yes, Peter. Uh, is there anything else that someone wanted to add that maybe I have forgotten? Yes, please. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Ah. Jarif is turning nine tomorrow. J Pat Watkins, the mm -hmm. grandson, JD. My granddaughter turns five on Friday. Okay, so I guess we'll move along with. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, calling to worship, you could read along with me if you so choose. When our bodies feel unable and the voices around us criticize us as weak and worthless, God calls to us and says, open your heart to your weakness and my strength. When we persist in the false belief that we must do everything on our own, never asking for help and persisting in our independence, Lord, open our hearts to goodness and the power of your love. Okay, so now we have our worship song. Okay, so we have some sharing. Peter, you get to run around again. I just want to 
thank Peter and Cliff for helping me out this week. I had to move from one storage unit to another, and they were more than willing to help me uh, do that transition. Thank you. Friday, I am going to be a great aunt again in February, and she's having twins. Oh, oh twins. I don't know if it's boys or girls. I want to be surprised, but I'm praying for boys. <laughs> Good morning, my wonderful church family. I just wanted to stand up and give praise and thanks to all of you who were very supportive during the passing of my mom. I came home and my house was flooded, flooded with mails and I'm grateful for that and messages on my cell phone and my house phone. So I, I stand on God's strength and God's grace because I knew that I'm, I was supported by my entire church family. It's great to be a part of a wonderful community that has been so supportive. grandson and he's a month today and I'm so happy and I thank the Lord that he has delivered to me. I've been putting in a, a lot of work the, these past few months for, for competition for powerlifting, as some of you know. This upcoming Saturday, I'll be competing in South Carolina at Nationals for overall um, strongest in the country for my weight class. I'm, I'm hoping top 10 in the country. That would be a great honor. Ultimately, I, I'd like to get, you know, be able to compete for, for World Cup. So within the power of God, I'd like to show praise for, for how far he's, he's let me come throughout like all doubts and other obstacles, injuries, I've been able to persevere. And it's all through the strength of God that I've been able to do that. So I want to give thanks to not only the church community for keeping me in their prayers, but God for giving me the strength to, to bring such honor and glory unto him. to say for the Goodman family that we're so proud of our mom. She's been a member of this church for I don't know how many years. I can't count. <laughs> Forever and ever. And we're also really grateful to our brother Jonathan for looking after her so well. And my sister Jenny was up from the city yesterday. We were all together for mom's night here. And my son Lucas is here from Ireland to celebrate. Um, I, this is very spur of the moment. I kind of didn't want to, but God said, come on, Lynn, you have to give glory. And I do give glory to all the kids who worked so hard this year and are graduating or are going into the next year with honors. I especially give thanks for our daughter, our granddaughter, Rebecca, who is going on for the next year with honors. And she's in a tough school. So I praise God. Thank you, Lord. opening prayer. Loving God, who opens our hearts to the mysteries of faith in ordinary and extraordinary 
moments. Please come here to us today. Make known among us and within your strength that we may experience your power that uses the powers of this world all we is to, to demonstrate your almighty love to all. Amen.
Okay, prayer of confession, and if you want to join in, please feel free. Almighty Father, we enter your presence confessing the things we try to conceal from you and others. We confess the heartbreaks, worry, and sorrow we have caused that make it difficult for others to forgive. We have failed to love others as you love us. In Jesus' name we pray and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Have a moment of silent prayer and confession. Okay, hear the good news as we place our trust in the Lord. The news of salvation, liberation from sin, brokenness and isolation from God. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from James 5, two short verses, 10 through 11, but powerful. Brothers and sisters, an as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Jacob's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> we'll have Annette who's going to do children's moments. Any children out there? same answer? Probably not. Sometimes the answer may be yes, and sometimes it may be no. If you ask for a cookie and it's almost dinner time, your mother's going to say, not right now, you'll spoil your dinner. You see, your mom wants what is best for you, and when you ask for something, yes, might not always be the answer that is best for you. Did you know that the same thing is true when you pray to God? Sometimes we ask God for something and he answers, yes, right away. Other times he may say, no. There are always times when we ask God for something and he says, not right now. The reason God doesn't always say yes is that he wants what is best for us, for his children. And what we are asking may not be best for us. You may be surprised to learn that even some of God's most faithful servants Sometimes got to know in answer to the prayers. The Apostle Paul wrote about a time when God answered no to his prayer. In a letter he wrote to the friends in the church of Corinth, Paul told them that he had a physical problem, which he described as a thorn in the flesh. We don't know exactly what it was because he didn't say, but it was something that Paul wanted God to take away. Paul said that he begged God, not once, not twice, but three times to take away the thorn in that flesh. But God said, no, my grace is all you need. Why would God say no to Paul's request? Paul was convinced that it was to help him to be humble and to put his trust in Jesus rather than in his own strength. If he had been trusting in his own strength, he might have been, not have been able to do nearly as much as he could when he was trusting in Jesus. 
I am glad to boast that I am weak, says Paul, who is the power of Christ may work through in me. God wants us to pray. Last week, Mr. Peter talked to you about praying. It's a conversation between you and God. He wants us to ask him for everything we need. But we must remember that what we want may not always be what we need. I want a million dollars, but I don't need it. <laughs> I'm just saying. God loves us and wants what is best for us. That is why when we pray and ask for something, the answer sometimes is no. Yes. Exactly. Every day is a new day to start over. A new day. Exactly. But every day I wake up, that's the first thing I thank God for. All right, thank you that I woke up. Another day to try to serve you better. Strive to be more Christ-like so people see the love of God in us out in the world. Excellent. That is really the best thing to do. Would you pray with me? Dear Father, Dear Father we know that you love our children and want what is best for them. Help us to remember that when we ask for something, and the answer is no. Amen. You can go to Sunday school now, and the cookies will be upstairs waiting for you. <laughs>
because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than warranted by what I do or say. Or because these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given the thorn in my side, a message of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in witness. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God. Yeah, you could be seated. <clears throat> okay, my, my sermon today is called Paul's Vision and His Thorn. What would you say if you were asked these questions? What do you expect from God? What do you pray for? What do you wish for? And what would, you what would your life look like according to your dreams and hopes? I imagine that most likely we would come up with some answers that more or less reflect our desires. We all want to be appreciated. We want, no, we want to matter, to be good and useful people. And some people have the need to be wanted and recognized for what they do. And we would like to have a good life and be treated well. It would be great to have a life without trials and tribulations, sufferings and pain. I think we would even like to be more in control of circumstances in our own lives. And with the Lord's help, not to suffer from being treated the way we want to be treated. If someone has the sort of life, I guess we would think that some people are so blessed by God, so blessed to have it all together so well. But you know what? That's not reality. We may have thoughts that we are loved and favored by God, and perhaps that's because we think we're just better and smarter. Guess what? wrong. Our Heavenly Father does not show favoritism. Today's message teaches us a lesson, a lesson about that aspect of Christian life that we may not find that warm and fuzzy, about suffering and weakness. The first thing we can notice is that our God is not like us. At least that's what came to my mind. He doesn't think like us. His ways are not our ways. What he thinks is good for us may be different very much from what we would prefer. Let's look at the life of Paul. I think he is a great example. What did Paul's life look like through our eyes? The first part looked pretty good, if I do say so myself. Remember, he was born in a wealthy family and was a Roman citizen from birth. Think about it. He enjoyed a good education and loved what he was doing, and especially had good connections with the Jewish government. But then came the road to Damascus, which changed his life. He became a disciple by the will of God. God appeared to Paul and told him that he would be his chosen representative and that he will now work for God to rescue people from the darkness and bring them into his kingdom. Wow, that sounded pretty impressive to me. But think about it. What did Paul's service to Jesus look like? Comfort and respectable and full of glory? I don't think so. Quite the opposite. 
there was a lot of conflict from the beginning. It, certain, it certainly is an eye opener. He went through imprisonment, beatings, shipwreck, hardships, hunger and thirst. Now add on sleepless and cold nights. Not a pleasant life whatsoever, at least not in my eyes. His own congregations turned against him, one after the other. And as that wasn't enough, God gave him a thorn in his side, a message of Satan to hate in him. That's briefly the life story of Paul, the greatest missionary of all times. But that's how it, but that's how it is. That's what following Jesus may look like. How many times Jesus warned us that we may be rejected and persecuted and hated by everyone for his name's sake. Deny yourself, take up your crosses and follow me. And if you love anything more than me, you are not worthy of me. And I found that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now we may wonder, but how could Paul endure all that? How could he be content, optimistic, and even cheerful in the midst of such challenges? The answer is someone who loved Paul more than his own life, suffered similar fate, and so much more for Paul. This someone was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He left everything. He left his divine glory, and he became poor for all of us. He emptied himself. He set aside his divine power and humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross for all of us. Guess what motivated and empowered Jesus? One little word, and that word is love. This divine love motivated Jesus to love us to the cross and to give himself up for us. This love, combined with God's grace, transformed Paul. It was similar to Job. Job lost everything. God allowed Satan to take everything from Job. And when Job cried for answers, God spoke to him. However, God didn't answer any of Job's questions. Instead, he revealed himself and gave Job a glimpse of what life is in his present. After that, in awe and amazement, Job could only say he had heard about God. But now he has seen him. He has experienced his gracious presence and his power. Now he was at peace. A moment in the presence of God outweighed everything as it did with Paul, who frequently experienced God's grace. That's why we would say that he was fully content, even boasted about his trials, weaknesses, and sufferings. It's hard to believe and understand that he would be content with something that at first appeared impossible, a messenger of Satan. This is another similarity with Job. God had allowed Satan to harass Paul, but why? Why would he do that? Out of love? First, whatever that thorn was, it was given to Paul to keep him humble. Yes, Paul was a sinner, just as we all are. He too was prone to become conceited because of the announcement that he had been blessed with. A messenger of Satan was in God's service to protect Paul and also to help him to grow and trust in the Lord. Paul did pray for it to be taken away from him, but no, that wasn't God's plan. The thorn remained to help Paul to experience God's grace. We have to remember God's ways are not our ways. Okay, but where does this leave us all? The truth is that we are in the same situation as Paul. Jesus loves us so much more than we can imagine. He gave up his life for us. But think about it. 
Wouldn't you do the same for your children? I know I would for my son. The same grace that God showed to Paul is now given to us, and the same power of God now rests with us. So, I ask you, how can we experience God's grace? In our weakness, for the sake of Christ, I think we first have to grow in the way of forgiveness, in patience when facing insults and rejections. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what is she talking about? Let's think about it. First, we're gonna grow in the way of forgiveness. You know how hard it can be to ask for forgiveness. It means admitting that you have failed, that you are not that good. But when the Holy Spirit reveals to you how much you are loved by Jesus and how he humbled himself for you, I think we are transformed. We don't worry anymore about our self-image. All we want is forgiveness. And guess what? The Lord loves us so much. We are his children. And the way we forgive our children when they go amok, he forgives us when we go amok. Now, facing insults. How do we react? What do we do when we are insulted or suffered injustice? Yes, we want to retaliate, to repay for what was done to us, to restore our name, our honor, and bring our enemies down. But think about it. Is that the road we want to walk down? I really don't think so. But if the power of God's grace dwells in us, then we are content as we are. We are not worried about insults or injustices, for we know that we suffered together with Jesus, and that God is with us and in us, and he is our rock and our strength. Thirdly, we're facing rejection. What happens when we are rejected or when others are hostile to us? We certainly don't like those situations. We want to be accepted. We want to be recognized and appreciated. Too often our self-esteem and self-worth is based on how others treat us or what they think of us. But when you experience God's grace and God's presence, when the Holy Spirit assures us of our Father's love and Jesus' affection, then our joys don't depend on others, but on our Lord. And only then we are free to be at peace. And fourth, growing gracious when we are mistreated. How can anyone be kind to his enemy? We can't on our own. But when we begin to understand how gracious God is to us, then the power of God fills us. His grace transforms our hearts and our enemies. And eventually, they cease to be our enemies. Perhaps we should think they have been deceived by the devil and are in need of our prayers. As Jesus prayed for his enemies and for us, as Paul prayed for his persecutors, so we are empowered by the same spirit to do the same. When the power of God rests with us, when we are made strong in Christ by his spirit dwelling in us, only then we are able to grow stronger in our weaknesses. Then we can stand tall together with Jesus, for we know who we are, beloved and dearly cherished children of God our Father. So always remember, Jesus gave up his life for us, and that fills us with courage and confidence of the Holy Spirit. We should not be afraid of what others think of us, or for what, oh, I'm sorry, for, for we know how Father in heaven values us. We are his children and always will be. I would like to end with this short prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray today that our Lord will help us to always remember that the greatest joy and gain for us is found nowhere else but in God's grace towards us. 
I pray that the Holy Spirit would help us to grow in our weaknesses for Christ's sakes. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And may God add his blessings to these words. Amen. Song. Our next hymn is number 389. Freely, freely, 389. Jesus, Lord of forgiveness, you forgive all who turn away from you. You forgive even those who nailed you to the cross. You even forgave Judas who betrayed you. And you forgave me the many times when I chose wrongly. Be with me now and with my church family, for I know you will forgive not only us, but all who seek you. Please pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Yeah, ushers, please step forward.
Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Please be seated. <laughs> I was too concerned about looking at these. Let's see. What do we have? Must have a healthy crew right now this week. We only have four. We have Pray for June for health and healing. Pray for Chris. Ask prayers for ASP and UM Army. ASP is on their way home and the UM Army on the beginning of their trip at one o'clock. And then I'm sorry, the print on this one is very tiny. Can you see? for cancer for full recovery. And I would just like to add, you know, Jean Engels, uh, she's still in the hospital. She's doing fairly well. They've taken her off a lot of the machinery that she's on, and she's hoping and praying that she'll come home next week. So may all of you mentioned be wrapped up in God's love and found deep in his everlasting wings, carried and kept safe and cherished. May the healing power of our Heavenly Father breathe across all of you now. Amen. Our closing hymn is God Be With You Till We Meet Again, number 672. God Be With You Till We Meet Again, 672. Please stand if you're able.
Jesus Christ and the love of God and with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. And may you all be blessed along with every step of your path by our Holy Father. May the sun shine upon you and may your every day be filled with joy and laughter. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.